Okay, I'm back again. I have a quick project up and ready for you guys. Uh, basically, I want to take one of these little nine LED flashlights that you can find anywhere from, you know, an electronics store to a hardware store, all the repair shops. Just about everyone sells these little things, and they make a pretty good flashlight. They have a nice, tough aluminum bill quality. Uh, they take three alkaline batteries, which, you know, has a battery life of around 30 hours of use out of those batteries. And they're pretty darn bright. Like I said, they're 9 LED. Uh, LED is one of the brightest lights out there right now. And they're pretty power efficient. The only problem is that, you know, the flashlights are fairly cheap. I only paid around two dollars and fifty cents for each one of these flashlights but the batteries you have to put in them are not a lot of times I use these flashlights when I'm working on a car uh, but more when I'm working on a computer and that's quite often uh, you know I fix AC adapters and everything like that for computers and a lot of times my lamp can't provide enough light so I'm using one of these flashlights and every couple of weeks or so I just about use all of the battery power out of these flashlights so I came up with an idea to take one that's sort of beat up. As you can see, I kind of melted the lens with a bad soldering job. I've dropped it on the ground. The aluminum's kind of scratched. This is one that's beat up, but I don't want to throw it out. You know, even though it's cheap, it still works. And I would like to use it indoors without having to put batteries in it. So basically, I'm just going to show you how to turn this normal, very common to find 9 LED flashlight into a USB power device. So what you're going to need is a roll of electrical tape. You're going to need some solder, just a little bit. You're also going to need a soldering tool. You're going to need a non-computer powered USB ports. Usually if you have an iPod, an iPhone, or something like that, you have one of these wall adapters. And it's best to test your device with one of these instead of your expensive computer because if something goes wrong, you know, you can replace this for fairly cheap, but not your computer. You're also going to need a USB cord. And it's very common to find these cords somewhere in a drawer that you have stuffed away. Um, you know, I have about five or six of these mini USB cords uh, because they came with every one of my digital cameras. They came with cell phones. Uh, you know, they came with printers and everything like that. And pretty much you probably still have some wrapped up in the plastic that are never going to be used. So go ahead and find one of these in your drawer somewhere. And you're also going to need a clean working area. As you can see, I'm using my desk, which is already scorched and scratched up from all the other jobs that I do. So let me get into things. Um, I'm already going to do some pre-stuff just to make the video go a little bit quicker. And I'll be right back. Okay, you can see I'm ready to get to work. I have the flashlight broken down into the three sections. I also have the USB cable already taken apart. I just sliced off the end there, exposing four wires. I had to find the positive and negative wire. In my case, the positive wire was, I believe, yellow, and the negative wire was blue. Uh, you know, all types of different USB cords are different. This was a weird wire. And what I went ahead and did was extend the wire so I didn't have to break down, you know, the insulation any further on this wire. And I marked off my negative with some black electrical tape, and I left my positive. Uh, wire kind of longish so I can loop it through the little spring at the head unit here which happens to be the positive connection uh, with the spring right here so basically what I'm going to do is take this little long positive wire and sort of loop it through the base of the spring and it's a little difficult Trying to keep it on frame here. And basically get the wires together and sort of twist so that you know it's kind of tight on there, it won't come off easily. And just go ahead, twist it about a good three or four times. Then you want to loop it to a point where you could obviously see it. Okay, there we go. 
And the next thing we're going to do is take my soldering gun, heat it up. Let me first zoom out here for a second so you can see everything going. So you can see I'm heating up my soldering gun. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take a little bit of my solder and I'm going to solder the positive wire onto this little loop here so that it won't come off. And it's okay, you can be a little messy with this, just as long as you're sure that it's on there. So, there we go. Everything is nice and tight. That's obviously not going anywhere. And, you know, just to make sure that positive and negative is not touching, I'm going to go ahead and take a little strip of my electrical tape here. If it will come off correctly. Wow. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a pretty strip. Let's just rip that little piece off. Then we take a little thin slice of it and sort of kind of encase it around the spring and that positive wire so that it can't touch the side if the flashlight moves around. Okay. And then what we're going to do is take the negative wire and just leave it on the outside of the flashlight sort of bordering this edge right here so that uh, you know when you twist it back on it's going to hang in there and that's going to make your negative connection now one thing I decided not to do is to run these wires through the base of the flashlight uh, because it will make the wire coming from my computer a little bit too short and also, I'm not going to be using the power button anyway. Basically, when I plug this into my computer, I want it always on without having to press this power button. Because this one on this specific flashlight was always just a little tough to press. I never liked it. So I want it on constantly. So, go ahead. It doesn't matter much because your wires are going to be hanging out anyway unless you drill through this. So it doesn't really matter if your wires are hanging out from the head of the unit or from the base of the unit. Uh, pretty much just make sure you thread them uh, when you're threading the head back onto the base. Make sure you're not threading uh, through the wires. Just make sure you're threading very lightly and very easily so that you're not shorting anything out. So as you can see I'm trying to thread the head back on making sure I'm not ripping anything off. And it doesn't have to be all the way on, just on enough to where it won't fall off of the flashlight. So, see, that's on. Pretty darn tight, just about as tight as it can go. Now, you don't really have to put the battery holder back in there, but just so I don't end up losing it, I'm just going to pop it back in there. It won't affect anything electrically. And then I'm going to screw the tail section on. So the only thing left to do is to test this. So I'm going to take the the male end of the USB cord, plug it into one of my um, non-computer powered USB ports that happens to be a wall adapter. What I'm going to use here since I'm not near a plug is my iCharge which is a cell phone charger which has that female USB connector. So all you need to do is plug them into one, plug them into each other, and you can see the flashlight comes on. Pretty easy. Um, you know, let it stay on for a few minutes to make sure nothing's shorting out before you plug it into your computer. And you can see this one pretty much is working good. It's powered by uh, this 5 volt USB port, and when it's powered by batteries, it's only getting 4.5 volts with the three 1.5 volt battery cells. So it's a little bit brighter than it would be with a normal uh, battery. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A pretty easy project to do. Uh, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.